Welcome folks, this is Wayne here, yet another YouTube Altering Gear review channel. Today I want to show you the Sofern BLF LT1. This is a lantern. Uh, if you're interested in that lantern, you find a discount code down below the video. I also received the light as a, at a discount, but I wanted it since a long time because I had nothing comparable in my light collection and I was looking for a good lantern for a while. The LT1 gives you nice 360 degree light. On top of it, you can change the light colors uh, between a very cold white and a very warm white. You can pick whatever light color you want. It has stepless dimming. It has a ton of blinky modes. Some of them are really unusual. Uh, it runs on the Android operating system. So if you know a little bit something about lights, you already know what that entails. But really, if you're looking for a very good lantern, you don't have a whole lot of options. You pretty much have to go with this one. Let me show you some other options. Like what you usually would find is a lantern like this, right? This one comes on top of it with a extra flashlight, which is interesting, powered by three triple A's. This one is powered by D cells. It offers reasonable brightness blinky modes yeah that's about it uh, I've used this since, since a long while but you see how bulky it is um, and how easily it could break the plastic is not very good it's operated by outdated D cells uh, compared with this one so if you hunt for a lantern you easily end up with something like this which is rather impractical um, the other alternative is those those stick lights, right? You find a lot of them, and they're kind of useful as lanterns. They're extremely robust, more robust than the BLF LT1. You can even take those diving, depending. There are so many different variations of these lights, but they only send the light out in, in one direction, and they just don't have uh, the same options as the LT1 and well they're, they're very easy to pack if you go backpacking but it's not it's not really comparable to this product either so if you look for a real lantern that also is a little bit reminiscent of classical lanterns that are powered by some kind of petrol or so then you pretty much end up with the BLF LT1. I don't know any competitors on the market. And that's a bit of a shame and I will um, tell you why in a few minutes. First of all, the build quality is excellent. It, this thing is powered by four 18650 cells. Uh, you have two tripod mounts, one on the bottom, one on the side, which is excellent. I love my tripod mounts. So for 18650s, you could also uh, power this light with just one 18650. So take an 18650 out, put it in a flashlight and the lantern still goes strong. The top brightness is about 600 lumens. Of course dispersed in a 360 degree circle. It illuminates a medium sized room nicely. It illuminates a camp size nicely. This is the warm white light color. It's quite a bit brighter, uh, the cold white, but the cold white is really, really cold. Uh, you have a USB-C port under a rubber cover, very well made. It's very easy to recharge. Uh, the button gives you a little bit of feedback about the charging status of the light. And ironically, it has the T uh, I think that traces back to the cooperation with Torfire. They must have a whole lot of these buttons. It's, it's very interesting. I saw this button with the T uh, the first time years ago on Torfire lights. It's kind of, it's a nice little quirk. Uh, I don't know what the explanation for that really is. Now anyways, the build quality is very good. There was a little lapse in the quality control. Mine came with a broken seal ring. Uh, the seal ring was, mal, uh, was not adjusted very well, so the head was kind of crooked, but I could fix that, just unscrew that. Uh, with that, I could take um, 
glance inside the light. The LEDs basically sit on top and down there you have some reflective elements that disperse the light nicely. This is a very solid plastic. It will not scratch up easily and it certainly will, certainly will not break. So the build quality is typical for Sofern, it's excellent. Now, my only beef with the light is, it is an Android light. And what that means, through one electronic switch, you operate a ton of different lighting options. On, off is very simple, you have mode memory, double click, you go to full brightness, that's the usual thing. You also have that on lights without Android. But then, if you want to go more in depth, right, you need a little cheat sheet. Because unless you use the light daily, I'm sure you don't remember all of that. How to go into different modes. Uh, I remember how to go into candle mode, for example. Uh, and it is click, click, long click. And then it comes on in candle mode. That's something I remember because I need that often because I'm a married man, so I need the candle, the, the candle mode on the BLF LT1. But there is a ton of other modes. And unless you constantly use those modes, you certainly won't remember. And then you need uh, something like that that explains it to you visually or something that spells it out for you in a written form. And you see this is a little user manual for a lantern and all of that user manual actually contains useful information information that you need when you want to fully take advantage of the functions of this beautiful light and this is where the ridiculousness comes in to a certain degree um, I tested the Sofern SP36 a few weeks ago and it also had Android and but this one adds another layer of complexity those samsung leds they can give you different light colors so you have different sets of samsung leds in there and that adds another layer of complexity that you have to get to with the user manual it's really very well done but again either you bring that with you or you bring your smartphone with you with this user manual uh, I'm certain you won't remember it unless you're an absolute genius, which I'm not. Yeah, you have blinkies and strobes. It already starts. What is a blinky and what is a strobe? That's not so obvious. You'll have you would have to remember all of that. So uh, let's go over a few more specifications. Okay, you have eight Samsung LEDs in there, 90 CRI. Uh, so you have four with 2700K, the one white, and four with 5000K. The maximum lumens is 600, just as I said. Uh, you have battery check, you have low parasitic drain. Uh, yeah, this light comes with all the bells and whistles because it is designed by Budget Light Forum members, by absolute flashlight cracks. And this is probably also the reason why this light is a dead end. I want to emphasize it. This thing is a dead end. You have all that functionality and you have one electronic button to reach all that functionality in that flashlight. How's about you do what every 5 euro Bluetooth speaker this day and age does? It has a Bluetooth module inside. So if you would add something like that, and you if you would have an app, then you could actually gain access to all the beautiful functions of this light with your smartphone. And you could also use the button, but you don't have to remember anything except maybe on and off. And you can do the rest with your app. That would be beautiful. And that would also blend in with the functionality that a light like this uh, actually offers. You could just modify the, the light color quickly, the brightness. You could determine how long a certain mode should run before the light turns itself on or off. You could set a time for the flashlight to turn itself on or for the lantern to turn itself on. You could maybe add in proximity sensors so like someone accesses your campsite or something accesses your campsite. The lantern turns on automatically and you know there's someone or something there 
All of that would be possible if you add in a Bluetooth module. Now I'm sure the uh, Android software is flexible enough to be able to accommodate something like that and I'm also sure with all the electronics that are already inside this light it would not be outrageous to also integrate Bluetooth functionality. So if you already have a very complicated high-tech light like this, why don't uh, make sure you have a user interface that is really up to the task? Because this one button electronic side switch stuff is not cutting it, at least for me personally. And also you would have a lot more options. Just imagine you have a Bluetooth app and you have four of these lights all around your campsite. And through the one app you can actually control all four of these lights uh, and at, the, at the same time. You know, you would be able to do that through Bluetooth and app control or something like that. So I would strongly suggest to go beyond this type of user interface or build on top of this type of user interface and go to something that is way more functional and way more comfortable to use in reality. So this is my only beef that I have with this otherwise excellent light. Uh, for the most part, uh, you use it on and off, ramp it up, ramp it down. Those are the most important functions anyways. Now this is not for just for campsite illumination. The light is so beautiful. It will be highly useful for photo and video applications or for, you know, if you do your Zoom or Skype chat, they have a good light source in front of you so people can see your face before they turn it off because their mm, your face is not that pretty. No, that was just a bad joke. It only applies to me, maybe. So again, light source for video, uh, light source for all kinds of things. This is really something that gives you options and also, of course, the mood light, right? Absolutely useful. So I like this light. I like this product. This product doesn't have real competition. This is not real competition. This is also not real competition. So what alternative do you have? But for the next iteration, the next evolution of this type of light, I would really wish for a better user interface, not with adding more switches, but with adding a Bluetooth module. Now this was wear and tear. I hope you liked my review and my little rant. Bye bye.